Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what we're going to cover today is how you can get started playing Dungeons & Dragons with miniatures without having to break the bank. I was having a chat with somebody on Twitter the other day about how they could get started painting their Dungeons & Dragons miniatures because they're starting out a new campaign, their D&D game is going to use figures and I thought, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. But they, you know, it was a little intimidating getting started because there's this huge range of paints, there's all these things you've got to have, and I started thinking about ways in which you could really get started without having to completely break the bank, without using 800 different paints. And what I think I've cracked on here is a way that you can get started and get a really cool looking model on the table, which, you know, will do the job, look pretty good, and isn't going to cost you the earth. So I've started off, let's get a look at the miniature we're going to use, because I really like these guys. Now this is Halith, or Halith, however you'd want to pronounce that, from Hassle Free Miniatures. There's their website there. Now Hassle Free are really cool. I cannot recommend them enough, okay? They cast their figures in metal, so a little bit different to some of the resin stuff you find out there. And they have some absolutely cracking sculpts. They do a huge range, not just fantasy figures, but sort of modern adventurers and sci-fi stuff too. And, you know, I absolutely love their stuff. The metal that they cast in is really tough, um, and there's barely anything you need to clean up. Like this figure here, I did nothing except glue her into the base. Now, speaking of the base, you might notice there's a texture over that. That is the stuff here, which in Germany I always find called structure paste. Um, I found this, this was in the what do you call it, uh, paint supplies aisle, you know, where you'd find canvas and scuddy old brushes and that sort of stuff. This cost me two euros fifty, okay, for a big old tubbly thing like that. And what it is, it's kind of like Citadel textured paint. If I just squeeze a little out, so you get a look at that, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to squeeze any more out. Um, but this stuff, when it dries, it's got that cool, you know, textured effect to it. So I think that's a really good way, if you're going to fill in the edges of a base, um, this is really cheap, it's hard wearing, and you can paint over it just fine. That's the whole point of it. This stuff will last you forever too. Keep it, uh, keep it sealed, it'll go through your whole group, and give it to your DM afterwards, and they might fling you some extra XP. So, woohoo! Bribery and corruption in the Dungeon Master. Always what you want. So we've sorted out the figure, let's get a look at the tools we're going to use paint-wise. I've got here five paints and a wash, or a shade. That's all we're gonna use. I've got Lead Belcher for her metal, Mornfang Brown for uh, leather, wood, all that sort of stuff. Now I've got Wag Flesh. I picked green for her sort of clothing color. You could pick whatever you want. Maybe you want a ranger in red, maybe you want a human fighter in blue. Just pick that and swap it out for something else, okay? I'm gonna use green because I kind of like how it's gonna look. We then pick a, a skin tone. I'm going to use Cadian Flesh Tone, which actually isn't a base paint like the rest of these. So when it comes time to put it on, I'll probably need to do a couple of thin coats of this. Then I've got black because you're always going to need black for something. And Agrax Earthshade finishes off the, the deal. So what I'm going to do is base everything that I want with these five colors, wash them, and then we'll highlight them again with the same colors. There's a trick or two that I'll show you along the way for making sure that the wood will look different from any leather equipment, which is nice and simple. But for the most part, we're just going to make it look dumb. Okay, this isn't going to win any competitions, but I guarantee you, you put this on the table with the rest of the goblins and skeletons and all what have you, they'll look the business. Okay, so let's get started. I'm armed with my medium layer brush and let's begin with the skin. So just a little bit of water in your paint to make sure that it flows off your brush. And then get started painting in these areas of skin. Now this time I'm going to suggest, ordinarily I say be messy. But because we're going to be painting this one uh, as simply as possible, try and be a little bit more careful than you might be normally because you want that grey to stay in place. The base coat is effectively going to serve as another colour on the model that we don't have to paint. And we don't have to buy another pot. So <laughs> take your time and I'm going to now finish off this skin. I might need to do, like I said, a second thin coat just to make sure that coverage is nice and even. 
Now there we go. After the second coat and the light being turned on, <laughs> you can see that much clearer. That doesn't take much to do. Now the important thing to note is if you do need to come back and do a second coat of color over something, it's you know, you'll be tempted to just use the paint that's on the palette and come back over. Try not to do that. Let each layer dry properly. So once the first has gone on, if that skin's a little bit streaky and the gray is showing through, leave it for five minutes. Don't worry about the paint on your palette. Just let that dry too and get some fresh stuff. Okay, that's it's one of the things that will quite often mess up your base coats is coming back and trying to put more on while they are still wet. So bear that in mind. What we'll get on to next of all is lead belcher. We'll do all of the metal on it. Now there's quite a lot of this. So if there's any point at which this is going to be a little time consuming, this will probably be it. So just go in now and you can flick your brush over her uh, chain mail fairly quickly. And remember, this will of course depend on what you're painting. So just cruise around now and anywhere that you want to be metallic, get in there now with your lead belcher. Now over grey, you'll tend to find you probably won't need to do a second coat of this. So this will, you know, not be too difficult. There we go. We've been a little bit messier that time around, but we're going to paint over most of those areas anyway. So what we've got next is the clothing. And I'm just going to get my wag flesh. And like I said, this could be anything you wanted. Red, blue, yellow, whatever you've got your hands on. This is now the point where you're probably going to want to start putting this on. So I'm going to just quickly start bashing this on. And let's not miss her sleeve there either. And as ever, what you're looking to do here is avoid anywhere that is already the color you want it to be. But don't worry too much about stuff that isn't. Now, on this model here, for example, underneath her jacket, she's got trousers and then boots. I'm going to leave her trousers in the undercoat gray so that, you know, there's another color on there that I don't have to paint. Shh. And then we'll get our brown and do any leather or wooden areas. So her belt, for example, obviously in this case, the model shield. We've got like a breastplate thing she's got going on, some shoulder pads. Just take your time now and pick out anywhere that's going to look better for being brown, basically. Now at this stage, she's really starting to come together. All I've got left now is the black. So in you get anywhere that's going to be black. And you may find, if you're careful, you've got a steady hand, you can get the laces on things with your medium layer brush. Otherwise, just swap on down to a smaller one. Take your time with this, okay? Because this is the last stage before we go on to our wash. Now after that, I've gone around and tidied up anywhere where the base coats went a little bit awry. So <laughs> there's one or two spots where, as I was painting the next color up, you know, I made a mistake and went over. But... It's easy as just opening up the pot again and going back to the last color. Okay, so what's important is that your base coats are nice and solid. So what we've got now, I mean, you could put it on the table like that, slay some goblins, but why not go a little further? And this is easy to do. What I've got here is Agrax Earthshade, and I've got one of the shade brushes. You could use your medium layer brush, but that might take a lot longer. All I'm going to do is... Start covering over the whole model in this Agrax Earth shade. You can be fairly generous with it. The more you put on, the darker she will turn out. But now just go around the whole model, and I mean the whole model, we're gonna do the base in this as well, okay? Just cover it over in Agrax Earth shade, and then give her probably about 40 minutes to dry. That was easy. <laughs> you can go ahead and chuck her on the table like that, and she'll look way cooler. We've got that nice, earthy, sort of almost grimy tone that I think fantasy figures really should lean towards. You know, if you're if you're doing something which is all glowing and shiny, then that's cool. But D&D &D never seems to feature soap in any of my games. You know, players don't want to spend money on soap. So, you know, I like that earthy tone that these figures can have with a little Agrax Earthshade. But, hmm, the leather still looks like the wood. However, we still have all of our fabulous tools right here. So I'm going to break out the Agrax Earthshade again, except this time we're going to use just a medium layer brush. And we'll go over and do a second coat of this over all of the leather areas to darken it down even more. Now once that last wash is dry, you can see how it's darkened down the leather even more. And we've got the, you know, everything is ready. You know, <laughs> we've got that cool sort of dungeon crawl brown on the base. 
So what I've got here is my small layer brush, because we're going to do some detail work now. Go back to that brown again, and what you can do here is very carefully get in and just do little lines along the edges of these leather details, just to bring them up a little and make them look as though the edges are catching the light. And in this way, they'll still look a similar sort of brown to the wood, but they'll have a bit more depth to them. So you can do as little or as much of this as you like. I mean, you may choose to skip this part entirely, but I think it looks pretty cool if you do get in there. And let's do some highlighting on that brown. Now, it might seem fairly subtle on the camera here, but trust me, you will see it much better in real life. And it's much more visible when somebody picks it up. You know, you're going to be picking up and handling these models a fair bit. So I think it's worth taking that little extra time. You can do the same with all the other colors too. So I'm going to do the backs of Knuckles, her nose, her brow, and just lighten up her skin a little bit where I want to accentuate that. We can do the same on some of the metal areas by using that lead belcher again. And you can also lightly drag across some areas on her chainmail that you want to brighten up a little. So try and be a bit sparing with that, but just to catch the edges of some areas, that can look quite cool. So, you know, go around, do the metal that you want to do, and then we'll do the same thing on her clothing. So again, just get out whatever color you're using, and we'll try and catch the edges and along any sort of larger flat areas of color. You can get in there now with the base coat again, just to brighten that up. Then with that, she's pretty much done. I mean, I'd put her on the table quite happily there. It's not as vibrant as if you were using, for example, the next step up, like the next of each of these colors. But by using the base coats over that first wash, you're going to get quite a nice transition of color. It's going to look a little muted, but it will be easy to do. And like I said, the whole point of this was just to get it on the table without having to spend a whole bunch on paints. There's one last thing we can do, though, that'll really help make her pop. And what I'm going to do is get a little bit of black. And then a little bit of brown. Mix those in about half and half with one another. And then what we'll do is just lightly go over some of the higher areas on her hair just to introduce a little bit of warmth to it so it's not flat black. And after all of that, there is the end result. And she's looking pretty cool. You know, I'd put her quite happily on the table. And I think the thing to bear in mind is that you don't need to reinvent the wheel just to get started painting these figures. You know, that was five paints, a wash, and a little bit of ingenuity in between, which these techniques are not difficult to replicate at all, okay? So importantly, give it a shot. You know, it does seem on occasion like it's quite daunting to get started, but honestly, just start. You know, get the hold of a, a figure that you like the look of. Again, hassle-free miniatures, they do some really cool ones, but you can check out wherever you'd like. Maybe you see something installed that just looks interesting. These limited palettes, you know, you can do quite a bit with. So what I'm going to do now is just grab a couple of photos and finish her up. So as ever, guys, you can get in touch. Just drop a comment down there in the box below, or my Facebook and Twitter are both linked there too. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.